Atlanta. Clearly a pro LSU crowd here in SEC country. Joe Burrow has been so good in this game, you can't find words for it. LSU right now, they, they smell blood in the water. Wide open receiver, touchdown! What we're seeing today is historic, yeah. and that isn't a strong enough word. This has been a complete dominating effort by LSU. I told Coach Riley, I'm going to win you a national championship, and, and I failed to do that. And LSU is going home to New Orleans to play for a national championship on January 13th. It's going to be a special night for everybody in Louisiana, but this is always going to be about the team. You're going to have to earn it tonight. This is what we do. Tonight, he says they are the hunter. Clemson has what we want. It's to ETN. Turned back, but does well and scores. Quarterback draw. Alludes a man in midfield. It's a shame somebody had to lose that game. Diamond Simon with my shirt tucked. electric right now what up i cannot believe it we are hanging out in new orleans getting ready and you are watching countdown to the college football playoff national championship presented by mercedes benz coming to you live from new orleans just over an hour and clemson and lsu will play for a national championship you can get that game as well as all the espn mega cast options inside the ESPN app and we're starting fancy. I'm yeah. just saying we are starting yeah. fancy. We got ties on inside. I'm Jason Fitz hanging out with Harry <laughs> Douglas outside wow. looking Hold dapper. Trevor Scales, Mike Golick Jr. The, the I, shot about the ties was not necessary. I was just saying, we already outside. had to get dressed up because Harry Douglas owns nothing well, but some, some, some guys listen, some guys do not. Okay, in fairness, it I is my true. Man. We're going to peek behind the curtain before we've even started. This is the way this show is going to go. We did get a group text from Harry and Harry said, you know what, guys, we should dress right Right for this show, but dressing right when you play in the NFL is a little different than dressing Can't right. Can't hide money. I, I know <laughs> my lane, baby. Money. I know my lane, and I'm going to stay in it proudly. Understand oh, that. Oh, man. Well, we know our lane over the course of the next hour. We're going to get you ready for the college football playoff national championship game the way only we can here. There's a ton of guests that are going to come by. We'll have a bunch of superstars stopping by throughout the course of the night. Analysts, uh, and then obviously Mike and Trevor are outside. Uh, they will be uh, they'll be hanging out outside also. So uh, we're going to get you caught up. You have been here before. You played here before in the NFL. Yes. So you know this stadium well. A, a little bit of the vibe and the energy already hitting. It, it just it feels different, right? It feels well, different. Out, outside of college game, the Mercedes-Benz Superdome is the closest you get to a college football game. When I played in the NFL, this was my favorite place to come and play. So the energy in this building tonight is going to be electric. Well, and, and you can obviously feel it. We expect a home field advantage for LSU, obviously. I mean, we're right down the road from Baton Rouge, uh, and we've been walking around Bourbon Street. And let me tell you, they have been absolutely, we've been staggering around Bourbon Street. They have been absolutely out and out in full force to get ready for this game. But there is a Clemson contingent. So, you know, there's one thing we know about Clemson. Those fans are always going to be here. But the home field advantage should play a, a, it's some role in the early portion of this game, right? Well, I think it's going to be a major factor for LSU. Uh, when Clemson is trying to 
do things. They might have to go solid count a lot to, to, to actually get the snap off. But it's, it's going to benefit the defensive ends for LSU to be able to get off the ball the way they want to. Well, it, it, throughout the course of the next hour, as we get you set again, a ton of different stars going to join us. Mike and, and Gary, Mike and Gary, Gary Streisand is going to join us Larry, later. I know Seriously? it's happening right now. I'm flustered. I got a star standing next to me that oh I can't God. reveal yet. I'm it's a little tie. I'm a little shook. I'm a little shook. Kid, Trevor Jr., what's the vibe outside? Yeah, sure. We can take care of that after you just absolutely botched <laughs> my name. So disrespectful. <laughs> Championship Square is where Gojo and I are, right? There's a heavy split, like you mentioned, Fitz, between the Clemson and LSU fans out here. And Gojo, you've had experience on this stage before. The National Championship game, no shortage of emotions that you're running through. Take me through the build up to this process after the hiatus that you have from your last matchup and making sure you're right mentally. Yeah, it's the amazing part right now is when it starts to get real, right? When you're getting on the bus and you're getting ready to come over to the stadium and you look out and you see the seas of purple, the seas of orange out here, knowing oh my god we're the only show in town and so managing that level of emotion becomes paramount and that is part of what i think makes each of these teams so interesting clemson's no stranger to being feeling like they're on the road that was how it was in the semifinal a heavy ohio state crowd for them out in arizona at the fiesta bowl now and for lsu you've got to manage being at home these are your fans these are your people this is your hometown and you've got to defend that being here for the first it's time. it's interesting that you mentioned just the the hum homeness that it could be for clemson at this point the matter of fact the fact that they have won they're trying to win 30 straight tonight 29 straight games in which they have been on the winning side of a matchup and so how do you then get yourself up for a matchup like this when you've done it time and time again you have been here this is your third trip in the last four years to the college football potentially winning a national championship how do you get up for that this is where the slow drift of what Dabo Sweeney's been feeding us all in public starts to take hold right now and you've convinced yourself of that long ago you've heard and that's the one thing you don't listen but you hear you don't listen to it actively because it is poison coming from the outside but you hear everything that's said about oh, the ACC ain't all that this year all oh, Clemson ain't played nobody out now it is the full transformation to Alabama in here so when you hear that enough you get a little sick and damn tired of it. And you get ready to do something. That's totally fair. And I think, too, when we looked at Clemson in that Fiesta Bowl matchup against Ohio State, it felt like when they had to play Ohio State, it was the first team that we really took any sort of legitimacy in. And when they got punched in the mouth, they figured out, oh, yeah, that's right. We have 128 straight. So let's go ahead and get number 29. They figured it out, got back into their groove and everything. Trevor Lawrence takes over, does his thing, goes off, the, goes off on the ground and through the air, and they figured out a way to win this thing. That's what you can always count on from a Davos any team is that they are going to be prepared to make their run and having that extra gear when stuff goes wrong that's the feeling i'll never forget it wasn't kickoff it wasn't the bus ride it wasn't that where it started to feel like oh my god this is the title it was after a few things go wrong it's after a review doesn't go your way it's after a first down gets overturned it's after something like that goes wrong like clemson being down 16 to nothing when you got to reset and avoid that feeling of quicksand right now Clemson has forged that in championship experience. LSU has forged that during a regular season gauntlet of a schedule, but making sure that you can channel that on the big stage. And that's where having a guy like 16 and Trevor Lawrence and having a guy like nine, you can look to when the excrement hits the fan to say, all right, I can count on that guy to make a play to just let everyone take a breath because sometimes that's the hardest thing in the world. To Without, do. And it's not to mention, though, like we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Joe Burrow and all of this and that he's been able to stay cool, calm, and collected in the LSU run that they've had throughout the course of this season. He's a new cat on the scene that really feels like he's taken over the moment that he sat down. Another new cat that has actually joined the ESPN yeah. family is joining us here on the countdown to the College Football Playoff National Championship. Fitz, why don't you introduce our very new man here at ESPN? We got all sorts of star power coming in. First, Omar Raja, Raja is joining us. Omar, welcome to the family. We don't always bring extra stars on, though. I'm just saying, Omar's here. We'll get to Omar in a second. Vince Vaughn, <laughs> like you're just walking around the sideline. We commandeer, we make Great it come in. What an exciting atmosphere. You guys feel it so far? Are you oh, feeling yes. it so far? Oh, yes. Great game, man. This will be fun. Okay, Mike Golick Jr. said earlier you're a big Notre Dame guy, so why, why are you hanging out? I did the movie out? Rudy originally and from the Chicago area, so I've always rooted for the Irish. And then I have a good friend from the area, so I've been coming to LSU games for a while. I've been following them, and what an exciting year this has been. It's been a great team to follow and watch. Is this the, uh, what, what's the best Vince Vaughn I've used my celebrity to get tickets to? Come on, there's got to be something. Well, it's all, never, never a bad thing to get a chance to come to games like this. Wow, well, that, is, that is fair. You got to pick tonight? We're doing this fancy thing here, so you just pick whichever color. Okay, purple, not even trying. Not, okay, look at that. You don't want to get your friends, huh? All right, we'll <laughs> add, we're, we're going to add them to our stuffed lion as we go through the course of the evening. You got a score for what us? What do you guys got? 
I mean, it's early in the show, Vince. I can't, re I can't reveal. You can't, can't reveal right now. Oh, I'm taking LSU. You Only because you asked me. You oh, gotta take ask me. LSU. I mean, I'm the taking LSU. This is a great team. They've had a great run. Two good squads. Mm -hmm. But I think it's such a special year for LSU, and then they're playing here in New Orleans. It feels like they'll finish it off. All the ducks are lined up right now for LSU. It is. But, you know, Bravo's phenomenal. What a great coach he's been. Unbelievable winning streak that they've been on. Two great quarterbacks. This is what makes college football exciting. So, I mean, with you and having been around the program, what makes this year different for LSU? You know, I think there's so many storylines. Coach O, he's got such a love for the, for the town, for for the university and I think the Joe Burrow story is incredible it almost reminds me of like Jordan not making his high school team here's a guy competing at Ohio State high level athlete doesn't get the starting position but keeps his work ethic finds an opportunity I think that hard work meeting the talent that he has has really made it a special year for them in the offense and then Brady coming over from the Saints and putting that offense in has really turned them up. Uh, let's be real. Let's he knows this stuff. That's <laughs> you know, one thing I like about this right now. He knows his information. You're burying the lead, though. I mean, let's get to the real question. If there's an after party, can I be your plus one? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, oh, that's that's amazing. Amazing. What about plus two? Absolutely. Well, plus three. We're going to make it plus three, but we have to keep it on the low until we get to okay. that point. Sounds because great that's, I'm good at that. Vince, thanks for hanging that's out, man. Pleasure, man. Great we to appreciate see you guys. Thank you, you so much. You guys enjoy today. Omar, all the Thank best you. Here. Thank you. you guys. Thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out. Omar, Roger, but I didn't mean to, to bury you, my friend. You know what? It's okay for Vince Vaughn. It's always going to be okay. You are the newest family member to the ESPN. We've yeah. got to hang out a, la a little bit over the last couple of days. You're here, obviously, hanging out with the college football experience. You're going to be around all of our digital stuff, though. Yeah. So tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing with the ESPN. So the first thing you guys both got to do is you got to go on Instagram, go to Sports Center, and click follow. If for some reason you weren't already, you need to do it right now because now I'm the voice of the Sports Center account. The account has been a lot different the last few days. A bunch of different videos, a bunch of user-generated content, and to all the people that are watching, I would tell them DM the account because now we're going through submissions and you guys can submit content to go on the page. Which is amazing, by the yes. way. So I like that a lot. You, but you, you want to get millions of views, right? Yes. And you want to get tagged and get credited and get lots of followers, right? 100%. So that's what I can do for you. Well, that's what I like. <laughs> okay. That's what I like. Now we're talking some good business. That's go. what I'm talking about. Right? I mean, if you could help me out with that, I always want a bigger <laughs> follower. You're also, though, a part of one of our other digital shows. And I yes. tell everybody, look, this is what digital is about here for ESPN. We're about being an extra screen. So however you watch your pregames, however you watch your games, and again, you can stay in the ESPN app if that's where you are right now on Authenticate, you can hang out with us, be right here throughout the course of it. But wherever you watch your content, we also have a great show in yes. NBA content, Hoop Streams. Obviously, Hoop Streams coming off a huge first season. You're going to be joining that team. So too. this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, join us before the Nets game. We're going to have a special guest. I can't tell you which NBA player is going to join us, but it's going to be different. We're going to have a bunch of different segments, a lot of different fun with athletes. I think if you guys were familiar with my old work, I'm always about having fun. And I, I would do whatever it took. I would put a toad on my on my lap to to make people laugh. And it's going to be no different this time. I always want to have fun with athletes. And we have a special guest joining us this Wednesday. So everyone has to tune in at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. It'll be a lot of fun. A little birdie told me you're a lifelong sad Dolphins fan. So yes. you're watching the college football playoff national championship game tonight presented by Mercedes yes. Benz for our show. Uh, what are you looking for? So this one's going to be tough. It's been nothing but bad. Ryan Tannehill got traded to the Titans from the Dolphins. The Dolphins have been trying to tank, and we somehow got the fifth overall pick instead of getting the first overall pick. So today, I was supposed to watch my future quarterback, Joe Burrow, light it up, and that's what's going to happen today because the Dolph a Dolphins fan luck is the worst luck. And I know Joe Burrow is going to throw eight touchdowns in the first half and <laughs> blow out Clemson because it's been nothing but bad luck to the Dolphins fans. Well, that's maybe, my pick. Maybe, listen, 56 Nothing to, in the to, first half. But to your point, you have Brian Flores, which I think yes. is an excellent hire. He's yes. going to do a great job for the Dolphins. They just got to get the quarterback situation right. Once they do, mm -hmm. I think he's building a defense that's going to be able to compete in the AFC East for years to come. Yeah, I, my worry was, though, because we've never gotten the quarterback. I'm 25 years old, and we've never had a good quarterback ever since Dan Marino. Oh, Mar, you're young. 25. Come on, buddy. Right, okay, I'm, I'm all going to say What do you this. mean? But we've never won. It's so frustrating because – you know what, for some reason in, in Miami, a lot of, when you grow up in Miami, a lot of people from Boston migrate over. So all the Patriots fans have been talking trash, and they have six Super Bowl wins. I don't have six playoff wins, so it's been super tough. Omar, those Miami Dolphins a long time ago had an opportunity to get someone who plays right here mm -hmm. in this stadium named Drew Brees. 
They yes. passed up on it. Now the rest is history I'm, for the New Orleans Saints. Again, as a Raiders fan in my You're early hurting me more. <laughs> as a Raiders fan in my early 40s, I don't want to hear about bad quarterback play. I've got a whole <laughs> lifetime of it. Omar, tell everybody how they can follow you and where they can watch you. Check us out on Twitter. Um, my Twitter is Omar ESPN. Make sure to watch Hoop Streams on, on 6.30 on Wednesday. And check out the Sports Center account on Instagram. Thanks for hanging out. Mr. Thanks so much. Thank you. Welcome me in. Omar was just talking about quarterback play. Well, one of the quarterbacks in this game, Trevor Lawrence, took a different step in the college football semifinal. We were able to hang out and watch it happen as it went down. And it's a reminder that there's more to Trevor Lawrence than just the way he throws the ball. Check this out. A lot of people don't realize how fast he is. Your speed. <laughs> Lawrence in a foot race. Will they catch him? Touchdown! He's got really good top end speed, uh, as you saw in the Ohio State game, and, and people people miss on that. He's a super fluid big guy, and that's that's tough to come by. And probably be a phenomenal pass rusher. If the defense, you know, is, is giving giving that up, then I'll take advantage of it. Whatever it takes, you know, that's that's how I think of it. As we continue on here on the countdown to the College Football Playoff National Championship, we are back outside Championship Square. Trevor Scales, Mike Goley Jr., and now we are joined by one Jim Mora. Then we want to talk a little bit about that quarterback situation for the Clemson Tigers. Trevor Lawrence is a guy that had his rough points in the season. And since the Louisville game, I think a lot of people point to the North Carolina game for the Clemson program as far as a turning point. But for me, Louisville was a turning point for Trevor Lawrence. Has thrown 22 touchdowns, not a pick since. How do you, as a head coach, get behind your guy and make sure that his confidence doesn't get jarred in a situation like that with a rough start? Well, I think it was a rough start at times, but they were winning football games, and he was learning along the way. I think what happened with Trevor is, it, you know, there's so much pressure on him to be such a great player, and I think he put so much pressure on himself early that maybe it was a little overwhelming. And I think what you see is a guy that relaxed, settled down, remembered what made him successful, went back to that with the help of Dabo. And you remember Dabo now, when he was having some of those games where he was throwing some interceptions early, you know, and Dabo would get on TV afterwards and he'd say, look, he had a couple bad plays, but he had a good game. And I think he just showed him a tremendous amount of support, at least to the public and behind the scenes. I'm sure he was challenging him and being demanding of him and making sure he's doing the right things. But uh, it's not uncommon, as you guys know, in athletics. You know, you hit a little rough patch, but if you're a competitor, a great competitor, and you're fully committed like Trevor Lawrence is, uh, you find your way out of those dark spots and, and you burst back into being the guy that you, that you always were and that people think you are. And, and Coach, I think that's just it, managing expectations mm -hmm. like that for a guy who came in with the world expected of him from sure. Alabama versus the other side with Joe Burrow. How is a coach, when you've got a guy who all of a sudden bursts onto the scene like this, is getting that midseason Heisman talk and eventually wins it, how do you manage that behind the scenes as all of a sudden you are getting newfound attention? You know, Burrow, he kind of reminds me of one of those rock bands or those, you know, those musical acts that they say he just bursts. He's the newcomer of the year, but they've been working behind the scenes for years to get where they were. So he's been accumulating information. He's been storing in his mind about defenses, about offensive schemes, you know, how to study, how to prepare to be the best he can be on, on Saturdays. And all of a sudden he put it together and he got Joe Brady in the great system. And he's got, you know, three great receivers. He's got Thaddeus Moss. He's got a running back and catch the ball out of the backfield as well as run it. And all came together. And he's got a level of maturity about him. Now remember, this guy, he's young than Lamar Jackson okay you know he's like two or three days younger than Lamar Jackson so he I'm sorry, sorry older, older yeah old, my, my bad, older than Lamar Jackson so there's a maturity with Joe that's kind of rare this day and age in college football when you talk about the LSU team as a whole though you're managing a lot of different emotion just from the standpoint of a lot of the guys on your roster were right in this yeah. dome's backyard yeah boys majority from the of, boot right? right and they're getting all their family in town and they're yeah. making so even logistically sorting out tickets that's another distraction to the team. How are you sort of managing everything that goes on leading up into a game like this? Oh, I'm sure what Ed did is, you know, it's a two-week window here. So that first week, he said, let's get everything that we can possibly get and taken care of, get it taken care of, tickets, hotel rooms, you know, any of the logistics for your family, let's get them taken care of. And then I'm sure he had a point man that the players could go to that said, okay, what do you need? I got it. Right. It's off your mind. And then, you know, invariably here as we get closer to the game, you know, people, hey, you got an extra ticket? Oh, yeah, you know, exactly. Right up the until point where Ed time. said, hey, you have until this point in time to get your ticket request in. But I think that Ed O, he keeps a, a, 
a good sense of humor. He's loose. He keeps it light. He doesn't get up tight. So his players don't get up tight. And they just they just kind of handle things. You know, they just kind of deal with it as it comes. And you don't make it a big deal if it's not a big deal. You mentioned the, like the rock star mentality. We saw there was a video of Kojo coming into the stadium, fist yeah, bumping, high fiving people state. in the crowd. They this embrace it like few teams well, I've ever seen. Oh, uh, you know, this is where he belongs. And I know that he was desperately disappointed that he didn't get the USC job. Sure. But it was destiny that he ends up here back at LSU in his home state. I mean, he's got his Cajun background. He loves this place. It's genuine. It's true. It's a passion like you really don't see anywhere else. It's the perfect fit for him. And, uh, you know, I've known him a long time. I've always loved him. And he's so genuine. You know, you, you see a guy like Coach O, and sometimes you go, oh, that's an act. There is absolutely no act to Ted O'Jean. He is the definition of genuine and authentic absolutely. and really personifies yeah. the state of Louisiana, not yeah. just New Orleans, but the entire state well, of Louisiana. Well, I lived, you know, my dad was a coach of the Saints for 11 years. Oh, I yeah. coached here for five years. I'm familiar with this place, very familiar. These people are passionate about football, not just Saints football, but obviously LSU football. And uh, Coach O, he's, you know, he and Sean Payton, two great representatives of, U, of uh, uh, Louisiana football. There's no doubt that they have no shortage of motivation, that being the LSU Tigers being right in their backyard, a four- to five-minute drive away to Baton Rouge. But there's no shortage of motivation on the other sideline as well, that being the Clemson Tigers. And one of those things that really did help them get through this season and not 29 wins straight was the theme of perceived disrespect. Huh? Or disrespect, man. It's just like people clowning on you, criticizing you. We do feel disrespected, low key. People don't necessarily look at how we've played and, and what we've done. They just look at our schedule. The whole story all year long was Clemson doesn't play anybody. But somewhere along the line, your program should get the benefit of the doubt. Regardless of what people think, I think we're pretty darn good. Our guys' focus is on trying to win the very last game that they play in, and they'll get the trophy that nobody votes on. All right, again, we're on two different sets. It's countdown to the college football playoff national championship game presented by Mercedes-Benz. The guys are outside. We'll see if we can get Jim Moore. Uh, uh, we need Coach Moore's pick. We didn't get a pick in the game. We'll see if we can get the pick. But while we await that, we bring in more guests. Like, we got so many sets going on here. Let's get a little. We just heard about disrespect. So, from the ACC Network, if we can yell over these LSU fans, we got John Beeson, Roddy Jones joining us. So, gentlemen, let's start with disrespect and sort of the, the word dynasty because we use it a lot during Alabama. Is it unfair that we're not saying dynasty right now, John, about Clemson? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you think about where this game is now, it's about the college football playoff. I mean, you got to play the top four teams and you got to play the game. There's no BCS where you can leave a number three or number four team out. We've seen in the past that the number one team in the CFP has yet to win the title. So the fact that you have to go into a playoff now, Based on these last four four uh, four years, if they can win three three titles, match Alabama, they would be the best four year dynasty ever. Real quick, the reason we're yelling over the crowd, as you can see on the screen, Joe Burrow's out on the field again. Yeah, I can't hear anything. There is a home Bananas. field advantage, Bananas. and it will be real tonight. So, Roddy, like when you think about this disrespect element, are they is it real, or are they just playing it up? Well, I, I think Dabo's played it up a lot. Now it's real because now you're playing a team that everybody thinks is unstoppable in a place that's right in their backyard. But Clemson just has to focus on going out and doing it here today because if they go out and beat LSU, it's one of the best offenses that we've ever seen, a defense that's been a lot better as of late. So, yeah, there, there has been some of that, but they can erase all of it with a win against that guy today. I mean, Harry, you're a wide receiver, right? Talk about these weapons that they have for Clemson. How do these weapons get anything done against LSU? Well, I'll say first and foremost, the game against Ohio State, the wide receivers probably had their worst game yeah, of their exactly career. Right. Right. They didn't complete one pass against press coverage against the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they're going to see a lot of press coverage tonight against this LSU uh, Tigers defense. So, it's only a certain amount of things that you can do. You are who you are. And what I did figure out about these receivers, they might not like too much physicality, right. but they might have to have no choice tonight. Right. They're going to have to like it tonight because these corners are going to be in press coverage. They're going to be up in your face, and they're going to see how you react to it. Right. And, Harry, you know, you got to remember, man, T. Higgins went out on that first drive. I think that was huge. <laughs> on the defensive side, you know, back when we used to play, play in the NFC South, we had to make sure that we made sure we, we knew where you were. That was the number one thing because – 
you were a great you were a great blocker. You had to go in there and, and dig those uh, those uh, linebackers out. Yep. But when you have T. Higgins on the field, you better make sure you have a safety over the top. That leaves a weak box, and then all of a sudden you get the big runs from from Etn or, or Lynn J. Dixon. So now that T. Higgins is back, maybe. He'll go out and do and do his thing, but that's going to be huge if they're going to run the ball because they should slow down and keep the ball away from LSU. Well, Harry, you made a great point about physicality. I thought those Ohio State corners were incredibly physical with Clemson's receivers. And, John, like you said, once T went out, it was really just Justin Ross because DeAndre Overton was overmatched. These LSU corners are very talented, not quite as physical as those guys from Ohio State. So I think that Clemson has a little more success. All right, guys, we've got a stuffed tiger, and what we're doing is we're putting beads on the tiger there for the we picks. Go. we got Carol helping us out so all I need you to do is lift up the color which pick uh, who you picking in the game just lift up the color for which be oh we got an LSU from Beast oh we got a Clemson so we got our first Clemson going you don't get to keep all right oh, this is a little budget here. Okay. Keep these things. Okay. I mean, okay. everybody's pulling for Clemson right uh, well pulling by in this stadium I don't know about that <laughs> right I don't know about that look what I do know is it's loud and it is raucous in here Trevor Scales Mike Golick Jr. what's the scene like outside Listen here, it's kind of died down just a little bit just because the game is getting ready to People pop People do got to right? get to their seats. Exactly. Yeah. But we understand that they're still rallying just a little bit. Except for this crew, they're still drinking. Exactly. Yeah. As you should. As we continue to count down to the College Football Playoff National Championship presented by Mercedes Benz. And Gojo, we have to actually put a bow on exactly what Fitz and them started on the inside. And that is our stuffed tiger out here as well. Jim Mora left us, made his pick on his way out. And uh, I think he's riding with whom? He went LSU on that pick. So we got a pick for LSU on the outside. There he it is. Pick for that purple trying to thwart that dynasty those guys were talking we'll about. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it going and make sure you are updated with all of our picks here as we continue to move towards kickoff. And, and I want to kind of talk, talk about that, that whole dynastic look that we're taking at the Clemson Tiger team. A team that is getting ready to win number 30 straight if they could pull off this national championship win. But when it comes to sustaining this level of greatness and, and making sure uh, you, you are in the pantheon of these great teams, where exactly do you feel they compare in all of these awesome super teams that we continue to talk about? Oh, this one would be the capstone on what is the modern dynasty. When we talk about especially the late 2010s in here, we know Alabama dominated the early portion of it. They had one of those back-to-back -back title runs in 2011, 2012, and all of that. So now when you start to get into that range, it changes it. But we know the how that they've done it as I think just as different and impressive. Obviously, it's been built on the back of great players. When you look at the Nebraska teams, the Miami teams, you've got names you can think of. Well, here, you've got the Deshaun Watsons. You've got the Trevor Lawrence that's going to cement himself as maybe one of the best players we've ever seen. But you've also had continuity in the coaching ranks. And I thought that was one of the interesting parts. Jeff Scott, who just got hired at uh, South Florida, the, off the co-offensive coordinator for this team, along with Tony Elliott, is the first assistant that Dabo has lost on his staff since 2016. We talk about the turnover for Alabama, the other dynasty, and what they've had to deal with. Clemson has had Brent Venables over on that defensive side that Dabo can look at and say, hey, we got a few more five stars that rolled in. We just lost about six of them to the draft. What can you mix up there in that pot? And he always comes up with something. And on the offensive side, we probably haven't given enough credence to what that kind of offensive continuity is. So Tony Elliott being able to do this without Jeff Scott now, I think it's just another interesting wrinkle and a different kind of challenge that Clemson had to face. Now. Without question. And it's not to mention, again, you touched on Brent Venables, but his idea of being there in that defensive coordinator position and just being so locked in in that defensive coordinator He's running scout team quarterback this week. Dude was just all about it, right? Like, he's he's so locked into that, and Dabo knows that he can't just turn over the keys to him like he did in the Ohio State game and say, look, go win this game for it. But in any case, as we continue to talk about this national championship, there was plenty of lead-in, plenty of festivities, including the players doing their bit of talking, and we got to catch up with quite a few of them. All right, we're at Media Days. Bourbon Street kicked my ass last night. I don't feel like doing my job. So, Brayden Fajogo, you're going to do my job for me. Are you ready? Let's do it. This thing is working, right? Joe Burrow. Hey, Brayden Fajogo, how you doing, man? You, you got a few, few time for a few questions? You got one. You got one. One? All right. So, heard you're a good basketball player, but if you compare your basketball skills to a player in the NBA, or, I mean, anybody, who are you comparing yourself to? Mentality, Delhi, shooter, Clay Thompson. I'm about to hit him with that heat. Hey, Coach O, you mind if I borrow you for one second, Coach? You're not going to make me work with <laughs> Hey, Coach, I heard about this cookie policy you used to have at USC. And when you took over, you let the linemen have cookies. Coach, I just want to ask one question. Why haven't we had cookies in our meetings? Excuse me, Grant. Grant I, one question. One question, please. <laughs> sir, sir. Hey, Brenton Felco, ESPN here. Um, Grant, you know, we, we, we talked about our last encounter 
Oklahoma Media Day, college football playoff. I didn't have a haircut. I got one now. I'm going to need you to expand on that. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow by TJ Malvo, best barber in Louisiana. But, um, yeah, so the tables have turned a little bit. I see you happy about that, huh? Yeah. I mean, something like that, man. Yeah. Spider-Man. I'm going to go with Jets. And the touchdown for Justin Jefferson. So he gets out of some sticky situations. Bam. You like how I did that. Iron Man. I'm, I'm going with the offense. I'm going to go Jamar. Jamar Chase breaks free. What about Thanos? Brayton Fajoko. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you, Clyde. Have a good day, big guy. Braden Fajoko getting ready to take all of our jobs. It's countdown to the college football playoff national championship game presented by Mercedes-Benz again. Michael Jr., Trevor Scales outside. Harry Douglas, I'm Jason Fitz. We're inside. Mark Sanchez joining us. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, you never know who's going to walk by the, the, as we're doing the show. So, Mark, I got to talk to you because this is all about quarterbacks, right? Everybody wants yes, to sir. talk about quarterbacks in this game. Who's under more pressure, the guy with the winning streak or the guy that everybody thinks is going first overall in the draft? Gosh, we're splitting hairs here, but I really think it's on Joe Burrow. He's at home. It's a home crowd environment. You hear this place. It's all purple and gold. I think there's so much riding on this for him, and he doesn't have a chance to redo anything. Trevor's got a chance to come back next year and play well again and try and be the first pick overall. I think tonight's Joe Burrow's night. He's got a lot of pressure, but he's cool. And when you speak about Joe Burrow, he needs to understand what's going to be the flavor of the day sure. that Brent Brettables does. You seen last year he do it to Tua. You seen last week he had a blitz for uh, Justin Fields. That's right. What? Can you pick up early on from Brett Venables? Speak to that from a quarterback's perspective. I think one of the most important things is they got to put Joe Burrow. Joe Brady has to put Joe Burrow in an advantageous situation. And what I mean by that is either start with one back in the backfield and empty it, motion him out, or start and empty and motion back in. Find number 11. The center's got to have eyes on number 11, Isaiah Thomas. And Joe has to have eyes on uh, number 11, Isaiah Thomas. But when you empty that backfield like that, he's going to know who's blitzing and who's who's dropping back into coverage. That's going to make his game a lot easier. Then he's just got to pick a side and go through his read. I got a quarterback and a wide receiver standing next to me that have played in high-level situations. What are you looking for from each other early on? Is there is there like some chemistry moment that you guys know that the other one's locked in? Listen, from, from my perspective, the most important thing to me is let's keep our same routine. If we throw before the game, let's go throw before the game. If we don't, we don't. But then the other thing, too, is as a quarterback and in the receiver room, you know when somebody's got a hot hand, feed them, man. And the coach should have a breakdown. Listen, on his call sheet, he should have a section called Feed the Studs. That's right. And that's when that player, whichever now, it is, now he's is talking my number language. one <laughs> in the progression, whether it's Jefferson, uh, Marshall, Chase, any of those guys, there should be a section there. If one of those guys gets hot, you keep dialing up his number. And what he's saying right now, in games like this, receivers like to get the ball early and often. That's right. It doesn't matter if it's a quick screen, if it's a now, if it's a slant. Let the receivers touch the ball early and often so they can get in their groove. So later on in the game, when you have to come to them in big situations, not the they're, one, they're yeah. ready for it. I, I'm going to continue to say rhythm and, and controlling adrenaline will be huge keys in this game. Mark, before we let you go, we got to make a pick. So what oh we're boy. doing is just pick up whichever color so okay. that we know we're going to put it on the Tiger. We won't make you play with the Tiger. Okay. So, all right, Mike's, Mark Sanchez is taking LSU. LSU. All right, you got a final score prediction for us? Oh, geez. I hope this place just explodes with points. So let's go 48-42 uh, uh, LSU. I All like right. that. All right, the stars are going to keep coming in here, but we also have stars outside. Trevor Scales, Mark Bowler Jr., what are y'all doing out there? Just real quick, we got to address this real quick because the moment Mark Sanchez makes the pick, we had Jonathan Bill joining us out here at Championship Square, and my man Jonathan couldn't help with this just shaking. Scars. Just incredulous. I mean, I mean, it's such a quarterback answer. Oh, you want to throw up. And man. it's beautiful. You talk all that offensive mm. chemistry, all that you want to, but we have Jonathan Bill here to yeah. talk a little bit of defense, and specifically on that LSU sideline where – they had an absolute bloodletter of a game in, at uh, against Ole Miss, and yes. they have since righted the ship somewhat, mitigated yeah. the damage, if you will, right? Yeah. How did they go about doing that? I think they had players-only meeting. 
I don't know if they did, but they sure needed to because it was really a gut check. It was, it was about forget the X's and O's. We're talking about if that man is blocking you, get off the block and make a tackle. If this running back is coming, you're free. Don't just whiff. Don't go reaching. Don't make these what we call business decisions where you don't want to get hurt, right? Oh, he's running a little too hard. I'm thinking about Sunday as opposed to the, the now on Saturday, Sunday meaning the NFL. So that that's what I believe happened where the offense was playing so well. And it was so glaring, the, the, the difference between the offensive level of execution and the defensive level of execution. And we already know, Aranda is a very good defensive coordinator. So you can't tell me all of a sudden he just forgot how to call defenses. He knows what he's doing. It was about the players executing. And both of these coordinators can dial it up. We know both of them can get into position, mm -hmm. but it's about great guys being able to orchestrate. And I'm always curious, the yeah. national championship game, I played against C.J. Mosley in Alabama, who's directing traffic. When you're going against a great quarterback as a linebacker like Trevor Lawrence or Joe Burrow yeah. what are you trying to establish early on we know what these guys want to come out and do physically what are you trying to do against a great guy like that I first want to speed up his clock his clock in his head so as soon as he drops back I'm hoping that coach is dialing up some blitzes five-man pressures or six-man pressures so that we can at least affect them I'm not saying get sacks I'm saying when he goes back and it's on number Four one thousand. He's throwing the ball. He's getting hit, and that's saying, "Oh, oh, okay." Not Let's a big about a little exactly. Bit. Not a big deal in the first quarter, second quarter, but he starts to third, fourth quarter feel that pressure. Now I'm also going to try to confuse him mentally. So I'm going to ask my safeties. I'm going to ask my backers roll down in coverage. Hey, act like you're blitzing. Come back out. And it's not to say that we're going to get five interceptions. It's just for him to, as soon as he snaps the ball, say, wait a minute, just that split second, what defense are they in? If they says that, now he has to hold the ball a little bit longer. And as I said, we can now get to the quarterback and affect him. It's a matter of just kind of making sure you play that time again, game, making sure that you make him feel rushed in any possible yes. way that you I can. I want him playing uneasy, left-handed, and throughout the whole game. Because that's got to be the most frustrating part as a defender when you yeah. get the Joe Burrows who are so adept at buying time and hitting big plays downfield. Yeah. Or Trevor Lawrence. Uh, what about that? Making a big play downfield or a guy like Trevor Lawrence who we saw do it physically, running yeah. guys over, running around guys like that. So the physical part, that's an issue, right? Because I, I, as I just talked about, it doesn't matter what defense you call. If you're right there and you don't make the tackle, there's nothing a deep coordinator can do. You have to man up and make that tackle. Now, going back to Trevor Lawrence, if they make big plays, the defensive coordinators on both sides should have already addressed that with the team, with their defense. Look, they're going to make plays. That It's going to happen. They don't average 49 or 48 points a game for, any, for no reason. So it's okay. Line up and regroup because this is a game where if you hold them to 27 points, 23 points, 350 yards total offense, that's a good day. They're good quarterbacks. It's a good offense. That's a good day. You understand where your losses, what, what exactly. losses you can take over the course of yeah. a game. Now, you at Miami didn't take too many losses to start the career. Back yes. in 2001, <laughs> you were a part of that Hurricane team that won 34 straight. Clemson yes. looking for number 30 straight. Mm -hmm. How do you compare? We'll, we'll tee it up this way then. Yes. Your, so your squad to their squad. Oh. Oh, don't do that. I, mean, I, just, I just want to know. Do that. I, I, we do it all the time. We all might as well keep so, it going. It, okay, then. <laughs> not to say we were better or they were better. I'll go position group by position group. At the receiver position, we had Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne, and Andre Johnson. They have Justin Ross, T. Higgins. They've had... Who was it last year? Uh, no, they didn't have a, a big receiver it, last year. It was the same yeah, cast. Yeah, the same, the same, the same cast, cast yeah, guys. So but we know the Clemson wide receivers that have come through there. Oh, absolutely. Andre Hopkins. Yeah. 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 Oh, really good. They're not part of that 30-game win. No, they are not. That's a good point. <laughs> right. Now, we go to the quarterback position. We had Ken Dorsey, Trevor Lawrence, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, we could take Trevor Lawrence. You go to the running backs. We had Willis McGay, Frank Gore, Clinton Portis. Uh, they have Travis. Yep. Yep. Good there. Who, very good. Yeah, Very and then good. but depth, right? And then and then defense. And I then mean, defense of, uh, right. yeah, yeah, we, you know, we don't even need to get that yeah. out. Yeah, John Taylor, so. Ed Reed. Yeah, it just Here. goes on. Oh, I just on. had to ask. I just had to ask. Now, but, now we have to ask, though. Exactly. Yes. Your pick for this game, LSU. LSU, and it's that quick. All right. It, We're it, gonna it, add it, it in it. which case, in that case, put it there. But remember, I, I'm not looking at a 48-42 game. I'm expecting a 27-20, 27-23 type of game. A little bit of a grind-out game. Yes. It, it, checking both offenses' guts. Correct. That's Exactly. Correct. That's fair enough. And so, Fitz, what do you have on that after we have sort of dispelled the rumor of an offensive just love fest? Look, the most important thing I have is I'm glad that y'all had to ask Vilma to compare the uh, dynasties, and I didn't because he's big. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, I don't want to ask Vilma anything about dynasties. My man is big, but he's still jacked. Like, Vilma 
looks like he could just step on the field today and murder me. All right, so it's the uh, countdown to the college football playoff national championship game. Again, if you are in the app, stay in the app, authenticate. You can watch the game right here. You can hang out. We're also on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we're everywhere that you're hanging out. We're going to get you set for the game. You never know who's going to stop by. We've got more guests coming. We'll be here all the way up until close to kickoff. I'm hanging out with Harry Douglas. Like I said, Trevor Scales, Mike Oleg Jr. outside. I'm Jason Fitz. I'm interested to talk a little bit as much as we're talking about dynasties. That is a level of pressure right now, Harry, that lives on Clemson's shoulders, dynastic pressure. There's also a level of pressure that lives on LSU because for all the good that was done by beating Alabama and for all the good that came out, like, there is a spot here where you got to finish the deed for everybody to, to sort of allow the, everybody to exhale, right? Yep. So what my, my thought early in the game is about controlling adrenaline for both sides of this game. What did you do? Like, is it a, a difficult part of an early portion of the game as I spit all over you? Uh, it's okay, but first thing, <laughs> Like I'm going to take a page now. out of what Mark Sanchez said. You do not you do not want to do anything differently. Do the same thing that, that got you here. Second of all, I used to listen to the hype music in pre-pregame warm-ups. When I went back in the locker room and we came back on the field for the game, it was relaxation, slow music, gospel, nature sounds, things of that nature. A man uh, never to, ceases to amaze me. Listen, to, to relax you because you don't want to go out here and overthink or, or tell yourself, I have to do this, I have to do that continue to do what led you to get you here. All these players, we have all these pros on this field and guys who are going to play in the NFL. Rely on your talent. Rely on your studies. Uh, rely on the time that you put in to prepare for this game. Don't let it change you because you're in a different at atmosphere in the national championship. Game. Easier said than done then, right? Like, let's be honest. That's easier said than done. So when you're looking at it, what do you look for early out of either of these teams to really show you how they're controlling the agenda? Well, for Clemson, I'm looking for tempo. I want tempo out of Clemson, get in and out of the huddle, and they must convert on third downs. Against this LSU team, if you do not convert third downs, you have to punt the ball to them, and then we, are, we already know what their offense is capable of. It, it's probably one of the best in NCAA history. For LSU, do what you've been doing all year. For their defense, they struggle with bunch formations, motion, shifts, stack formations. Understand early what Clemson is trying to do, so it can get you over the hump and get them off the field on third downs. Well, and, and it's interesting because these are all, there's so much pre-snap that we're going to see in this game. Yes. That's the one thing I think really, the chess match of football is, I think, when you're watching it, maybe the coolest part, especially when you're watching with really smart people. By the way, you can watch all the different mega casts and see a lot of different opinions on, on what's going on as it goes down. But it's the pre-snap stuff that I think is going to be most interesting to see how it's communicated on the defensive side of the ball, what they're reading, what they're following, and what quarterbacks are able to see from what Whatever's being cheated that actually gives them some advantage post snap pre snap I think is going to be a huge aspect of this game. Well, I'll say with Clemson on, on their defense. They do a great job of zone blitzing and they play an NFL defense. And when I say that they disguise their coverages. They wait to the very last minute to move into what they really want to be in. So if you're LSU always keep your head on the swivel know what you're getting and when you see it when you process it deliver make the play and you'll be all right you're watching the college football playoff national championship countdown countdown to the cfb national championship game presented by mercedes-benz now we've been trying to give you an education but maybe one of the best in the world of doing that is dan orlovsky so let's take a look at today's lesson brought to you by dos Equis. Hey, I'm Dan Orlovsky with the Countdown to the National Championship, and today's lesson is how Clemson can beat LSU to claim their back-to-back -back national championships. First, Dabo Swinney in this Clemson offense with Trevor Lawrence. They need to use the quarterback run game. LSU defensively struggled to defend that this season. That's got to be a key offensively for them. And then Clemson's defense. How are you going to shut down LSU's dynamic wide receiver? Terrace Marshall Jr. going deep. Jefferson in the short to intermediate game. And then the Bolitnikoff winner, Chase. How do you slow him down? And that's today's lesson. Love this stuff from Orlovsky, but since he's not here, I'm going to feverishly debate him. Uh, look, I, I had the chance to, to work with Dan this week on College Football Live, and one of our topics was Trevor Lawrence running the football. We were standing on the sideline at the semifinal game. We watched it. He doesn't protect his body running the football. He runs upright, and he takes some hits. He just gets murdered sometimes. He's big. I get it. Shouldn't there be some level of concern for how he protects himself when he's taking those hits? Well, I'll say tonight, no, because it's for all the marbles. When you have a game like this that's for all the marbles, Fitz, listen, 
you're willing to take any kind of blow that they throw at you. But you got to stay in the game, Harry. Well, you're right about that because he did take a shot and he came back. But that also no, he let, died. Like he died. We but, all watched him die. But that let field. everybody else know to us what kind of guy he is, how tough he is, physical and mental. I, I, the interesting part of when he, <laughs> I jokingly say when he died on the field, that the interesting part of the hit, I'll use my 80s wrestling analogy. I'm an old guy. I grew up an 80s wrestling fan. If you remember Hulk Hogan, they would put, put his arm up in the sleeper and it would fall to the ground. Yep. And put his arm up and it would fall to the ground. Yep. And on the third one, right before it hit the ground, he'd start doing the shake. And he'd start doing the shake. That's what we saw. When Trevor Lawrence went down, it was the second time because they were, I mean, they were teetering on the edge of losing the whole game. It was the third down call when he, when he went back on sack. It turned into a first down instead of a punt. It looked like Ohio State with all the momentum was going to get the ball back. And then they shook. And as they shook and they raised up, they changed at that point. Does that carry over from one game to the next one. Of course it does. But if you're the, the LSU Tigers from a defensive standpoint, if you're going to play man coverage, you better have a spy on Trevor Lawrence. That's what Ohio State did not do. That's why you've seen so many design runs and big runs. And they were struggling on offense. So what Dabo did is threw an alley hoop to Trevor Lawrence and say, take us to the promised land. And that's what he did. You see him here tonight well, in Mercedes-Benz. The other side of this uh, is obviously LSU is the, the crowd again going absolutely nuts every time LSU even walks by them. Then speaking of LSU, let's get to our road to the championship presented by Mercedes-Benz as we took a look, take a look at how these teams got here. And Trevor, I want to start with LSU. And to me, this is simple. They got here. There were many, many moments along the way. There were, oh, never mind. Now we are totally audible. audible. Oh, when the man go. in purple comes up, you just change everything. Here I mean, go. Ryan Clark is here. Ryan Clark, how are you feeling? How are you I feeling? I am totally unbiased. Right. <laughs> I mean, Ryan Clark, analyst extraordinaire. But Ryan Clark, you also went to LSU. You're around this team. How you feeling? You feel good? I look like I'm feeling Fitz. Oh, man. It is. It is. I'm feeling like a champ, Fitz. I am feeling like a champ. I remember seeing this when I played against you. I remember the God fire, me, guys. Man. It's the same fire that you had when I really talked. Yeah, yeah, freaking yeah. Freaking nervous. Okay. I'm freaking nervous. Now, um, we're going to capitalize on that. We're going to capitalize. See, we're going to play a game with you. Are you ready for a game? We're gonna I play need an asthma pump. We're going to play a game with Ryan I ain't what I used to be. Look <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question, okay? okay? And then what I'm going to do after I ask you a question is my man Harry Douglas is going to raise the sign on whether he wants you to answer it like an analyst oh, or answer. like a fan. Hey, All right? When the two combine, I can't help it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's look at, we'll start with LSU. All right? LSU's defense can't stop Trevor Lawrence. How do you want him to answer? Oh, like an analyst, okay? You got to be out your <laughs> rabbit. ASS mine if you think we can't stop it. That, oh, first oh, off, yeah, hey, we don't first off that orange is ugly, right? Straight up, their uniform's ugly, their quarterback got long hair. Automatically disqualifies you from being tough. Oh, he's talking we about in the NO. <laughs> we in the NO. So when you come to the NO, you better be about that action. Master P was about that action. Baby was about that action. Lil Wayne was about that action. Weeby, God rest his soul, about that action. Don't you forget about mystical now. So when you now. come here, you better be about it. I, I don't know. I just went to church. I went to <laughs> church and I was good. Okay. Right. We'll take the other side of this, all right? Okay. Dabo never loses, and it's just a fact. Well, that's dumb because it's not a fact. Dabo is not undefeated. Okay. That's right? Fair. Trevor Lawrence is. Trevor um, Lawrence never loses. But I will say this. The one thing about Dabo Sweeney, which does let you know how great of a coach he is, is he's done it against different type of teams. He's done it with different type of teams. He's also done it in tough atmosphere. So being in New Orleans against Louisiana State University, that's not going to scare his team. He's actually going to use it to his advantage. So I do think Dabo Sweeney has an opportunity to use his experience and his wisdom to help his team off to a good start tonight, which makes me slightly nervous. All right, we'll give you another one. This LSU offense is the boat best of all time. It's not just the most best. It's the most bestest of all time. It's the greater than the greatest of the great of all time. Joe Burrow's not just the Heisman winner, right? He's not just the kid who had to transfer, overcame, and is better than any quarterback that has ever played college football. This offense could go out and play. You could cut Joe Burrow's left hand off. You could cut Justin Jefferson's right foot off, and they would tape everybody else up together, and they would score 50 points. 
if we put them in a basketball shooting contest, which you have seen, they're the Golden State Warriors. So it don't matter what the sport is, we win it. I'm loving the energy right now. I mean, I love every ounce of this. Ryan Clark is. You got me want to go out there and put my pads on, man. Get it right. Ryan Clark is a sensation today. Okay, one more. One, one more. more. Okay. This is the best defense in the country for Clemson, and they are the one defense equipped to be able to slow down LSU. They are not. You know where the only defense equipped to slow down LSU resides? In the Bay. You know who's on their line? A guy named Bosa, a guy named Ormstead. Their linebackers are named Greenlaw, Alexander. They got a corner by the name of Sherman, a safety named Tart, another guy named Ward. This is my analyst hat. It's the only defense in America on any level, high school, junior high, pro, that is equipped to stop this offense. You can run them all out there. It's easy when we're playing North Carolina State. Me and Harry could go out there and stop North Carolina State. Facts. We could put Fitz at D tackle. Oh, Facts. And stop oh, North Carolina State. Facts, Let's go. Facts, everyone. But you know, the N and the C in front of the state ain't like the L that's in front of the state of the team they play tonight. And they are very good, but they have never seen a monster like this. All right, before we let you go, we got two beads. Lift up whichever one. We got to make your pick with the beads. Put them on the tiger. To pick my team? But wait a minute. I want your analyst pick for the beads. All jokes aside, this is going to be a great game. We're looking at the number one overall pick this year, number one overall pick ne uh, next year at quarterback. I think the game is tight. I believe LSU needs to score 40 to win, and they do. It's going to be 41 37. Joe Burrow and his offensive and weapons find a way to score, and we get the final stop on defense with a big play by either Derek Stingley or Grant Delpit. So I'm going with LSU. Is this uh, LSU, right? Yeah, that's LSU. But, but now, while well, you go put that on the Tiger, now I want to hear the same. Oh, look at that. He kissed the Tiger. I want to hear your pick again. This time, as you walk out with your mic drop moment, give me your pick again. This time, be the fan. Ryan Clark, the fan. Everybody in the world knew when they said the championship was in New Orleans, we was going to win it. It wasn't a question. It wasn't a thought. It don't even make me prophetic. It just makes it facts. We've been climbing the mountain steady. Chicka, 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 chicka. Chicka, 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 chicka. Chicka, 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 chicka. And it's about getting to the top of the mountain. And every time we got to a different step, you know what we did? We took an opponent and we threw him off. We took another opponent and we threw him off. This the last opponent and they'll be thrown off too. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, if you did not go to church yesterday, you You're went to church right here Monday night. Glory, hallelujah. The only thing with more energy than what Ryan Clark just gave us is Bourbon Street. Gary Streisky was out there last night and lived to tell about it. Check it out. I'm Gary Streisky and this is my hell. Clemson, LSU, two good football teams, passionate fan bases, devoted fan bases, sober fan bases. Go Tigers! Woo! I don't know them. Bourbon Street. Lego. Who's got the best Death Valley? Uh, it's definitely Clemson. If you think about it historically, they basically. <laughs> sorry. They took our name anyway. Theirs is Death Valley. Ours is. You got the Tigers fired up. Look out tomorrow night. Go Tigers! Which Tigers, though? What? Which Tigers? Oh! <laughs> what do you mean, which Tigers? Hey. There's only one Tiger. Hey. Who's got the best Death Valley? Oh, let's, let's do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. C L E M S O N T I G E R. Fight, 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 fight. Look, it, it's Joe Burrow. It's Joe Burrow. Oh, damn it, you're not Joe Burrow. Turn around, though. Oh, I thought this was Joe Burrow. God dang it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Trevor freaking Lawrence. Trevor. Trevor, man. dude, why are you here? Should you be sleeping? Partying, bro. Having a good time with the game, man. This game over, bro. All Easy. Right.
Good luck. Appreciate it. Bro. Thanks, man. We have scoured Bourbon Street for the last three hours. And the one thing that I have learned from both fan bases are that they are very, very, very well hydrated. Good God, it's a countdown to the college football playoffs, national championship game. Gary Streisky, you went from Bourbon Street to right here, you survived. Okay, yeah. First of all, how am I supposed to follow up what Ryan Clark just did? You, you said what I'm thinking. The performance he just put on right here on this table. I can't follow that up. All I can say is this is the loudest stadium I've been in. We were at the national championship last year, and this absolutely trumps that. The atmosphere building up is insanity. It basically came from Bourbon Street and carried over right into here. It's insanity. All right, now let's just be honest here. It's the weirdest thing you saw while you were, what, what hit the cutting room floor, Gary? Don't Spice hold here? anything back, Listen, Gary. I understand this is internet TV, so we have a little bit extra room to work with. We do work with Mickey But even Mouse I now. cannot say the weirdest thing that I saw go down on Bourbon Street. I'll tell you all after we get off air, though, and there's no microphones around. Did the grenades get the best of the people out there on Bourbon Street? They did. I they think did. anything that was drinkable, yes. All right. Understandable. Rank it, grenade or hurricane? Which one's better? Uh, I like the I like the fruity drink, so I'm going hurricane. And it reminds me of a slushy. I like them. All right. So the road to the championship, obviously part of why we're here. Road to the championship, presented by Mercedes Benz. We'll take a look at how these teams got here. We were saying before Ryan Clark came in and took us all to church. LSU got here. For for me, as many moments as they had this year, this came down to one thing beat Bama. You had to beat Bama. The whole defining moment for LSU, no matter how good their season was, they don't beat Bama, nobody cares. They beat Bama, they go to the next level. To me, the road to the championship for LSU went through that one game, as important as the rest of them were. That is correct, but for me, it was a couple of them. The Auburn game, they had a close one. When they needed to make the plays, they made the plays. Alabama, Alabama game, like you just mentioned, when they had to make the plays at the end, they made them. Texas game, they had to make the plays at the end. And you've seen what they did to everyone else. They just destroyed everyone and else. And I was going to say, going back to that, the Texas game, because I went to about a handful of these LSU games, and every single time they performed. But the, L or the, the Texas game is really when, like, they opened up eyes. Like, okay, Joe Burrow threw how many touchdowns? Justin Jefferson had how many receiving yards? So that's when I really think the people who weren't diehard LSU fans are paying attention to the SEC really were like, okay, LSU is going to be a problem this year. I think it goes all the way back to that September-October slate in their schedule. Yeah. And, and through all of it, let's acknowledge the thing that changed this year, we've all heard a lot about it, is, uh, is Joe Brady, obviously. Joe Brady, the passing game coordinator, comes in, changes everything. So LSU's offense exploded this year. To me, that's the road to the championship. The change this year at offense, obviously. But I want to give Coach O credit. It takes a lot for a coach to come in. And we gave Saban a ton of credit when he did it for Bama. It takes a lot for a coach to come in and say, hey, I'm going to change the way I do things because it's better for my quarterback. And I'm going to say this to everyone who's watching. The great coaches out there, it doesn't matter what level that you're on. That's what they do. All right, we're gonna, I can barely hear and hear, but I do know this. Trevor Jr., we just told you the road for LSU. Gary's going to stick around. Does he get to make his big hit? Uh, will you guys give us the road for Clemson? Look, man, it is a matter of expectations, I believe. Right, Gojo? When it comes to this Clemson Tiger program and walking into this 2020 season. Yeah, right? the road started at the national championship last year when all of a sudden your best wasn't just good enough. Perfect was the only thing that was going to be accepted. Trevor Lawrence is supposed to walk in this season and win the Heisman Trophy starting in week one. And we know that didn't happen. We knew there were a few interceptions. We knew they were compromised physically against North Carolina was, I think, the thing that was as wild to me as anything. And so really from that point on, when you saw a team, a young North Carolina team and Matt Brown challenge them in that way, losing on the last play of the game in a game that felt like a loss for Clemson because of that, to watch them turn it around after that, you said it best. It really started for especially Trevor Lawrence, who was the focus of all this, who we judge all this based off that Louisville game. Absolutely. Trevor Lawrence, as you mentioned before as well, it was like the weight of the world walking out of the gate uh, into the opening game of the season for them you saw that sort of pressure just sort of mount on him and have to he had to fight through it in a sense and he did by the time that Louisville game came around for me it was a matter of this 
this Clemson team, right, is embodied by Travis Etienne's season this year. Quiet as it's kept, he's just been doing his thing and just sort of mowing down cats. Eight yards a carry was the conference player of the year, set uh, conference records in total touchdowns with 57, rushing touchdowns with 52. And we are still just kind of saying, you know, Travis Etienne's a nice player, but this dude is clearly balling. And Clemson as a whole is clearly balling. And look, the other factor for Travis Etienne, and we'll talk about this in just a second, is a matter of, uh, oh, hey there, OBJ. Yeah, we'll actually check in with that. So that is a guy that will obviously root, root, be rooting for the gentleman that's uh, on the far sideline from Clemson and the LSU Tigers. But to go back quickly to Travis Etienne and just his journey to this point, right, he has sort of embodied just that Clemson Tiger program and has really just been indicative of how they've been able to take care of business on a week-to-week -week basis and wind up on this national stage. And you're going to build stars along the way, right? Like, that's the other thing we respond to is the names that we know all in all of this. LSU had a chance to forge those in a lot of big-time matchups. Top 10, ranked on ranked, good on good, when all our eyes are on it. Clemson had the North Carolina game when we paid attention. And then they went away for a while, and a funny thing happened. They started throttling everybody by 40-something points a game. Brent Venables all of a sudden had that defense that lost Christian Wilkins and Dexter Lawrence and all those names that we knew, those Power Ranger dudes on that D-line that everybody knew that went to the draft. You had to kind of rebuild who that was. Now Isaiah Simmons has become a household name. And you did all of that, and then you went out and absorbed contact, right? Ohio State, who was the best team that you would play bar none through the course of the season, came out and thunder-punched you, and you absorbed their best blow and said, oh, wait a minute, we did this thing last year. We know how this goes. And so no lead formed against them can be good enough in this one. And so I think that is the story of their season is even through that weak ACC slate that we all talked about with that, they still had that in them because they had that store cash from last year of, we know how to do this when it gets thick. We'll have to see if they can get it done far from home. It is nowhere near their home atmosphere when we talk about it and what's going on in that dome behind us. But it's not quite home for Joe Burrow either. Thing is, though, he certainly did make this city home. Joe has came to Louisiana and pretty much taken over. The fact that he altered his last name to fit Louisiana shows how much that he's appreciative of Louisiana. Louisiana loves him. They went crazy when they saw the way the back of his jersey was spelled. He's like the son that was pretty much born for Louisiana. Everywhere he goes, people want pictures, want autographs. He has that same effect that Drew Brees has, and that's, that's saying something. One of the best players in the history of LSU, and uh, now he's a Tiger for life. All right, we've switched Gary's. Gary Vanderchuk joining us. Thanks for hanging out, man. We're just walking by. You never know what's going on. We got the marching band back behind us going here. They're clearing our whole area. We don't even know where people I mean, are being sent. Off the charts. I mean, compare this like what you what other environments you've been around that are like this? You know, I grew up in Jersey, so that's much more NFL country. And when you get into the college atmosphere, it goes off the charts. I mean, for me, outside of English Premier League, soccer, football, as they call it over there, it's hard to replicate this energy. And Gary, I'll tell you, playing here, yes. I played for the Falcons for seven years, and I got to play here numerous of times. This was my favorite place to play away from home because it's the closest place that you get to a college atmosphere. Yeah, no question. And obviously the division rival for you guys. So the, when the energy gets to this level and this kind of atmosphere, and when you got these two kind of programs, this could be a night a lot of people remember. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to put it into words, especially it's my third year being in a national championship game. But because we're so close to LSU, I mean, yes. it just it speaks to the entire region. Like you can, it feels different. And last year, I noted in San Francisco when we were out there, you could feel Clemson taking the place over. Here, it's as not a even nice close. Night. No, it's not even close. And, and it's going to be a difference in this game because we all feel it palpably, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, and more importantly, just the build up and the momentum of the Burrow story and the whole like do it for the state. Like the energy is just uncomfortably high so with that being said yes go over to the bowl make a pick pick whichever beads you want gary you like you're it. telling who's gonna win you and then you it. put it on the you tiger you good? good all right gary's gonna make his pick for us we'll see where he goes so far by the way we have only one pick oh he's just taking all the beads out oh he's, he's he has two. two of he's them. putting two of them two on the tiger two two is for the blowout i actually think this game is not close wow okay i really do 
All right, there we go. Oh. He's, he's calling it. Gary, thanks for hanging out, man. We appreciate it. it, it this is it, it's absolutely spectacular. They're saying something in my ear, and I can't hear it again. I, oh, okay, <laughs> this is what I know. Now, it's, it's loud in here. What I know at this point is when you come to New Orleans, it's loud in the Superdome, and you have to eat beignets. Check this out. It opened in 1862, runs 24 hours a day, and not much of anything has changed in 155 years. With the simplest menu on Decatur Street, dark roasted coffee, and dough that's deep fried to perfection, served in orders of three, pile on a thick coat of sugar and enjoy. You've got time. The chaos is everywhere. They're kicking us off the field. We got to go inside. Harry Douglas, Jason Fitz. I'm throwing that out to you guys. Oh, we're here. All right, there we go. Yeah, Harry <laughs> Douglas, Jason Fitz. I'm telling you, it's a madhouse Figure in here. Out, you guys outside, take it over. Figure Scales, out. Golick, I don't know what's going on. Yes, it's there is. Come on, really? Pandemonium. The kid gets Listen. rattled as soon as the big stage happens. I get it. I, I understand, Fitz. It's okay. You just go enjoy the game at this point. Me, Mike Golick, Julia, Ryan McGinn, and Ladder out here at Championship Square. We'll be joining them in just a minute but for now i want to talk a little bit about beignets because my man here gojo Dude. had quite the expedition earlier Dude, today it was uh it was a day guys <laughs> it was a day it's not often you're asked to step up to the plate like these two teams and challenge the greatest like undisputed right. heavyweight Without champion of the world Joey Chestnut, the number one eater in the world in a beignet eating contest. It was terrifying. So the prep process for it. We saw you prepping earlier today. You came downstairs to the lobby before our production meeting, got a couple beignets, making sure you weren't starving yourself, right? Yeah, no, I got a, got a little bit greased the skids in there. I mean, do we have do we have the B-roll of this? I think so. I think yeah, yeah I we think, fired oh, up. Yeah, let's God talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Yeah, so this is who will eat more beignets? Who do you think? It does. Oh, oh my God. Look, 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 look at the girl so on the did left. So you go all yeah, into look, the look. technique of, of the water <laughs> consumption? <laughs> look, at the, look at the women behind you guys. They're like, oh. People are yelling at me, like, eat looking. faster. It's like, what do you think I'm trying to do? Did Joey Chestnut take this seriously? Jen, I watched, you know, like, when a great athlete gets in any sort of competitive atmosphere, I watched it click in, where all of a sudden he started doing the thing. He ate 78 of them <laughs> in four oh, minutes. no. How many did you eat? Oh. So, and, 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 and we got a chance but to yeah, talk exactly. to him about we it afterwards. We did get a chance to all. chat it up okay. with him after Thank it you. all went down. Look at the pain <laughs> in my oh. face. Just so proud. Ever the showman, ever the fat guy. Here with the number one ranked competitive eater in the world, Joey Chestnut. Joey, you're the, you know, we did a little exhibition ah. here, not a full-fledged contest, but you win nonetheless, because that's yeah. just what you do. How was your first foray in the beignets? Oh my God, eating a beignets in New Orleans is sweet, and uh, I found a decent rhythm. They were going down good. I was a little bit worried about the powdered sugar, like choking on it, but uh, it was delicious. That was the big bit of advice we got going in, which was not to inhale the powdered sugar. And saying you got into a rhythm is, being pretty modest, I looked over here. This is what I always said is like the equivalent of dropping a lay person into the middle of an NFL ah. football field where the speed of the game shows up there. What was the little wiggle I saw you had? I'm going trying on there? to, well, yeah, the beignets are doughy, so it's hard, it, your body, it's, uh, it's hard to get them to settle down, so I'm settled deep in it, so I'm just trying to wiggle them down, get them deep in, make room for more, and uh, keep going. I know the number one question on everyone's mind now what do you do post game? Oh my god, there's only four minutes eating, and the hot dogs I'm eating for 10 minutes, it, it's, if we're talking, I can eat a lot of food. And so I, I prepped, I didn't eat today, so I, now, I'm, now I'm feeling good. You can go enjoy the rest of your day I'm, now. I'm, I'm having a good night. You got a prediction, by the way, for this game? I feel good about Clemson. Wow. It, 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 they're, they're used to being the underdog, and uh, yeah, they're, they're doing it. Crushing beignets and all in on Clemson. Joey, thanks, man. We Thank appreciate you. it. And so as we welcome you back to the countdown to the national uh, college football playoff national championship, Jim Lada immediately, the moment <laughs> Joey Chester said he likes Clemson, the, 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 the look of speculation across your face, why? Oh, no, no, I think that that's a good pick. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm going to go with LSU. I know we're going to get to that a little bit. Fair enough, yeah. Why hasn't he told us how many beignets he had? <laughs> I had why haven't we avoided this part of the conversation? I had 14. Out. 14. Oh, 14 in four minutes. In four minutes, that's super respectable. And he thought that's respectable. awesome. And then he said, no, it's, a, you know, it's like that scene in Elf, right? 
when Buddy's over there and whatever toy that he's making, and they go, good job, Buddy. He's like, I made 15 <laughs> yes, of them, and you're yes, like, yes. that's amazing. And the other guy made like a 417. <laughs> he's cranking them up. How about that trophy? Bun? So he ate how many? He ate 78. 78. 78 beignets, and he got a trophy that came from four tickets from Chuck E. Cheese. That's like, that was like, dude, is that worth it? We spare no expense here at the, the World Wide right? <laughs> it's about the glory. It, uh, honestly, it was the competitive fire that you want to see in any great athlete. Yeah. It was. It was like being next to Usain Bolt or Joe Montana. Here's the thing. When I go to the Brazilian Steakhouse, now and I stand up yeah. and start doing the shimmy. I'm yeah. gonna to go, make sure you yeah, get your money's Joey worth. Joey Chestnut said, "This yeah, is know. what you it's do." Physics. Yeah. It's physics. You gotta get your money's to. worth. It truly yeah. is. And so when we uh, shift the focus back just a little bit to the game and everything that's going down, getting ready to go down in the Superdome, I want to kind of get your take, Jen, on your time with the Clemson program, specifically with Travis Etienne. And and this is a guy that's coming back home. How is he handling the amount of emotion that comes with playing in front of your family of thousands, basically? I, I think as well as can be expected, right, guys? I say think about the biggest stage you've ever been on. Think about the culmination of your career. Think about when everything is pointing towards something. And then think about how you manage your emotions. You know, like, I, I get an upset stomach when I think about a race I'm about to do, and there's yeah. nothing on the line when I go out to run a race. These guys have figured out a way, and you know how it works. Mentally, they go through all of these drills to focus themselves so that when they're on the big stage, in the biggest moments, they can handle it. But in the weeks leading up, he's gotten a ton of people reaching out to him. He is from only about, you know, a couple hours away from here. And this is what you dream about as a kid. So I think that it's all part of it is managing the emotions, managing the, the nerves that go along with it, and just kind of playing between the lines. And I know that ETN will be ready for that. And again, remember, Clemson has experience in this situation. A lot of those guys are leaning on having been there, done that in this game environment, and hoping that that gives them the advantage tonight. Well, and listen, we will watch the Coach O now. And listen, oh. so many of these guys oh, on this roster have played in this building in high school championships. I've talked to half a dozen guys at Media Day that played in this building as a sophomore, junior, senior for a Louisiana high school championship. And I said, well, how's it going to compare? And they're like, all the same people that were at that wanted tickets to this. Yeah. You know, so, so I, <laughs> it's so, a little bit larger of a scale. Yeah, That's well, Marty McGee, we, we, I asked you about this, about the, you know, when Notre Dame finally got back to a championship game and the pressure that came with that and you were at the hotel, staying, at, guess, staying at the hotel with LSU, it was like hard day's night. Yeah. I mean, thousands of people in the lobby and knocking on Coach O's mom's door in the middle of the night, all that stuff. And they don't seem to think that's going to be a problem. No, it's amazing watching everyone deal with the sheer scale of this. And I think that's the thing that might be an issue for programs if it were someone else being back on the stage before right. the LSUs and Clemson the world. And, and, and Ryan, I'd ask you this because you went down this rabbit hole. They're both used to not only big time programs, all the things that comes with it, but playing in those atmospheres. We got two Death Valleys in this thing. Oh, yeah. We got a lot on the line going oh, into this yeah. one tonight. You went back and dove deep into this, deeper yeah. than anyone I've ever heard and wrote about it. What did you find out about who actually had the original Death Valley in all this? So the original Death Valley is Clemson, and that goes back to the 1940s. So Presbyterian College, go Blue Hose. Blue Hose. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Blue Hose. Back in the day, they were a huge Clemson rival, and they used to open the season. Well, in fact, in fact Presbyterian had killed Clemson, and then they wow. lost two or three in a row, lost 170-something nothing at Clemson, and the coach at Presbyterian who had gone out to the 1932 Olympics in L.A. and spent a day in Death Valley, California, he goes, this is what this is like. It's hot. It's miserable. I've, I didn't think I was going to get out here alive. It's worse than Death Valley, California. That's where it came from. Well, over the years, LSU started using Death Valley because it was so loud. A former uh, All-American boxer from LSU owned a gas station next to the stadium, the Tiger Stadium, and the windows would rattle, and he put a sign out front, Welcome to Death Valley. <laughs> and listen, I'm a little older than all y'all, and when I was in college, we went to LSU when Tennessee was playing at LSU, and they called it Death Valley. And eventually it transitioned over to death, and part of the reason is because when Cajuns say death, they Sounds. say death the exact same way. But also because no one could hear. Yeah. 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 What? Death? All right. Yeah, sure. That sounds yeah. good. Whatever yeah. you say. Yeah. So yeah. Clemson is the OG, but I would also argue that with so many people on a Saturday night, man, it, it, it's tough to beat the environment at LSU. So let's get to the spicy part then. Your picks for this game. Jen, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mentioned LSU earlier. Uh, I would never, ever bet against Clemson because they've been there, because they've done that. Dabo Sweeney has proven over and over again that he can coach a team to the national championship. But there's something special about this LSU season, and that's why I'm going to go with them. Uh, I did a piece with Joe Burrow. From a leadership standpoint, guys, and this is taking nothing away from Trevor Lawrence, he is the real deal. He is the goods. And so I get the feeling that he, much like Lawrence, can score at will. 
it seemed that way, at least yep. in their recent games. I mean, you talk about the first half of that last game that they had. That was almost flawless football. Who can say that? Who has re Whose resume has that on there? So that's why I'm going with the LSU Tigers. Put the beads on oh, the there, Tigers. We got the beads there, on. We got the beads. Fire and McGee, so your, your take on this, having delved as deep as you have into each of these programs' yeah. history, what is your takeaway and what do you think will happen? I was at the LSU-Texas game week two. And people forget now how gigantic that game was. Two top Huge, ten teams. Yes, Texas yes. wasn't maybe what we thought they were going to be. But the, the context of that night, and that's the night I discovered LSU's new offense, right? And then I saw them against Auburn in the middle of the season, and it was a slugfest. And LSU should have lost the game. And Joe Burrow got his brains knocked out by Derrick Brown all day long and still forgot a way to win the football game. I've had them number one all year, so I'm not going to wait for that. Now, that being said, Almost a year ago, tonight, I was sitting with <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. and I sat right there, and I said, guys, yeah. I said, guys, there's three potential scenarios, and one's not going to happen. You, you can have an Alabama <laughs> blowout. You can have a close game. We ain't going to have a Clemson blowout. And about halfway through sure the third enough. quarter, somebody said, I saw what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I said so, yeah. That's how the game goes. Though. That, that, yep. this is, it, we'll see exactly how it unfolds. So, Gojo, your takeaway and how you think this is going to unfold. I, I am also predicting an LSU win tonight. I think it's been interesting with all the focus on the air raid offense of all this. LSU's got the best offensive line in college football. They won the Joe Amore Award that gives them that title of the best unit in college football. And the job they've done dealing with a guy, Joe Burrow gets that sneaky fast label put on him in a lot of this. Why? We're used to seeing, I can't understand or imagine why both of these quarterbacks would get that. We're used to Trevor Lawrence making those plays with his feet. But with Joe, so much of it is buying time, holding the ball the six, seven, movements. eight seconds. Yes. And to watch that line pass protect one-on-one -on -one, five-man protections and hold it for that long I think that gives you an edge when you're dealing with a very complex defense that's going to throw a lot at you early I, I love the idea of kids at home watching this game and watching these quarterbacks oh. you know what I mean they can learn so much from the way they go through their progressions the way that they stand there confident in the pocket the way they make the accurate pass downfield it is a clinic that I hope people are paying attention and to. not to mention everything that is encompassed by what they do off the field and as we sort of look at this right? entrance man like look what is it? oh it's my Lot, man. Like, they hit you know very well. Small well, machines and lays down. Down. As we count down, we are under Dance. two minutes up until kickoff right here on the countdown to the college football playoff national championship. And my pick, I know goes to a point yeah, that I'm out for you. I'm get ready to get out of this. No, I think serendipity plays a large part in this, right? LSU, this buildup, the fact that Cats were marking this on their calendar two years back and saying they were going to be on this stage and succeed on this stage. I know because we're basically splitting hair between these two programs, that's the sort of factor that feels like it's just going to play into what the result is going to be for a game like this. And so, yes, I am taking LSU, but frankly, I have picked, switched my pick about eight different times. All right, you know what? The course I think I have learned over the course of this that we are all doing this, and we are all right. Ryan McGee, we did this last year, and we all went yeah, all in and on this, this, this and we're exactly all putting a bunch of these purple <laughs> yeah. beads on yeah. the Tiger right now. And we know what's getting ready to happen as we look at that bus. Uh, Come on out yeah. the tunnel, man. Well, like I want two show. things to happen in all this. One, I want us all to say we're all going to stick with this, no yes. matter what. We have made this at this point. I will live with what's on the internet here. It's, on it's there forever. Yeah, no, that is true. The internet will hold us accountable. <laughs> Without the takes exposed is ready and waiting. Number two, though, we're going to retire the, well, a Tiger's going to win tonight joke. We're yeah, officially yeah, retiring. Yeah, yeah, we not that. one of us went that direction. I'm you so glad. I'm so proud of us. We That's, brought a bunch of high-class individuals like over wrestling. here. I say the winner gets to keep Death Valley and Tigers, and the other ones have to leave. That's a we'll great see exactly idea. how Death that Valley unfolds Jr. there. Yeah, yeah look, look, Greece, we're all kinds of stakes at all kinds of stakes up here for this national title aside from just the trophy that gets hoisted at the back end of the same. So that has been a wonderful season of the countdown to the college football playoff national championship show presented by Mercedes Benz, but none of this happens without all of the fans that we continue to watch on YouTube Live, ESPN app, Twitter, wherever you may so get your streaming services. So we appreciate you. So to close this thing on out, we're going to actually take a look back at the very best moments from each and every one of you. That was good. That was. That was good. That was professional <laughs> that was hosting.